Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Saith. This is the second lecture of this new method solving fractional differential equation. In the previous lecture, I took a differential equation which contains only one term. But now as you can see that we have three terms differential equation out of two have the fraction order derivative alpha. So we will take the same technique we used last time to solve this differential equation. As we assume that our solution will have some power series, especially it's, it's, it's a metog leffler function E alpha A, some constant A, x to the power alpha, which in terms of infinite series can be written as some summation from n0 to infinity A to power n, x to power alpha n, and in denominator gamma of alpha n plus 1. So we have assumed that our this differential equation has this kind of solution. Okay. Now we will assume that uh, we just take the notation instead of d alpha over dx alpha, I will call it d alpha. And since I am taking capital sense derivative, so I will take it from 0 to x and here c stands that I am considering the capital derivative, fractional derivative. Okay. Plugging this value here in the differential equation, it can be written as d from 0 to x capital derivative of order 2 alpha and y which according to our assumption is a series from n 0 to infinity a raised to power n x to the power alpha n and in the denominator gamma of alpha n plus 1. Then again we have fractional derivative from 0 to x of order alpha this time of y the same series <coughs> excuse me and from 0 to infinity a raised to power n x raised to power alpha n and in the denominator gamma of alpha n plus 1. This is the definition of talking to the function. And that last term minus 2y, again we have y is this infinite series alpha n and denominator gamma of alpha n plus 1 equal to 0. Okay. Now we have to apply this fractional derivative on this series since it affects only a function of x which have only one term x to the power alpha n. So we can write it as we can write it as we can switch the order of summation and derivative is summation from n 0 to infinity a to the power n and then gamma of alpha n plus 1 of capital derivative from 0 to x of order 2 alpha of x to the power alpha n. Same in the second term we can write a summation n from 0 to infinity a to the power n gamma of alpha n plus 1 and capital derivative from 0 to x of order alpha on x to the power alpha n and large series will remain as it is as this does not have any derivative x to the power alpha n and gamma of alpha n plus 1 equal to 0. Okay, now using the formula, since we know that the derivative of order alpha from 0 to x of some power function x to the power n is equal to gamma n plus 1 over gamma n minus alpha plus 1 into x to the power n minus alpha. I have proved this formula in, in my previous fractional calculus. So you can go and have a look of, of this proof. Okay, using this formula, we can write summation n from 0 to infinity a raised to power n over 
gamma of alpha n plus 1 and using this formula here note that power is alpha n and order is 2 alpha so first term is gamma of n plus 1 which is the power n power plus 1 since here power is alpha n so here I can write gamma of alpha n plus 1 then we have x to the power n minus alpha which is the difference of power and order since here we have power alpha n and order is 2 alpha so here it becomes power x to the power alpha n minus 2 alpha and in the denominator whatever the power of x plus 1 so here it becomes alpha n minus 2 alpha and plus 1 and same way we can write a second term summation n from 0 to infinity a raised to power n over gamma alpha n plus 1 and here power is same alpha n but order is alpha so gamma of power plus 1 alpha n plus 1 into x to the power power minus order which is alpha n minus alpha n whole over whatever the power of x alpha n minus alpha plus 1 this is the derivative of x to the power alpha n and minus and the last term will write this as it is a to the power n x to the power alpha n and in the denominator gamma of alpha n plus 1 is equal to 0 ok now little simplification this term cancel out this also cancel out and what is left is summation n from 0 to infinity e raised to power n x to the power we can take alpha common so here n minus 2 of alpha in the denominator we can also simplify it taking alpha common n minus 2 plus and for the second term and from 0 to infinity a raised to power n x to the power alpha into n minus 1 and in the denominator alpha into n minus 1 plus 1 and last series will remain as it is gamma of alpha n plus 1 is equal to 0 ok now we have to change the index here I want to make the power of x same in each term here power is x to the power n alpha but here is n minus alpha and here is n minus 2 alpha in order to make them same I will just replace n minus 2 equals some other dummy variable k so or it can be written as n is equal to k plus 2 and here I will replace n minus 1 by k or n by k plus 1 and in the last term just to make the variable same I will just replace n by k okay. under this replacement I will have n uh, uh, now no, the series will have dummy variable k instead of n so okay since n is k plus 2 so here k plus 2 and it becomes k is equal to minus 2 so k start from minus 2 to infinity a to the power n which is now k plus 2 x to the power n minus 2 which is k so it is k alpha and in the denominator we have gamma alpha and this is k so alpha k plus 1 for the second series again n is k plus 1 so it start from k negative 1 to infinity a to the power n which is here k plus 1 and x to the power alpha k and in the denominator gamma of alpha 
a plus 1 and the last series we just replace n by k a to the power k x to the power k alpha over gamma of alpha k plus 1 is equal to c okay as we have seen last time that the value of k is starting from negative 2 but for the these two negative values like for the first term k is negative 2 and k is negative 1 we will get nothing and the same for the second term when we put k is equal to negative 1 we will retrieve nothing from this equation so we can just start the values from 0 so we can just make them 0 because first two values negative index will give us nothing okay now we can take common we can take x to the power k alpha common and we can take gamma alpha k plus minus common so summation from k0 to infinity here we have k plus 2 in the second term we have a power k plus 1 and last we have 2 into a k and outside we have alpha k x to the power alpha k and gamma alpha k plus 1 equal to 0 okay now comparing the terms because right hand side we have everything 0 so we can compare the coefficient and we get a to the power k plus 2 plus a to the power k plus 1 minus 2 a to the power k is equal to 0 the coefficient of, these are the coefficient of x to the power alpha k and since this is a number in the denominator but whenever multiply on the, on the right hand side it will also become 0 so all we left is this equation okay now we have to solve this equation to get a so I can write it a power k into a square and then a to the power k into a and minus 2 a to the power k is equal to 0. I can factor out a to the power k and I am left with a square plus a minus 2 is equal to 0. Since a is not 0, we cannot take a 0 because if we take a 0, just look at the start what we have assumed y is equal to e alpha a x to the power a. So if I take a 0, this will become 0 and this is a trivial solution. Of course, we are not looking for a trivial solution. So for that, we must restrict a to be non-zero. For a non-zero, this a to the power k will not zero. That means I am left with a square plus a minus 2 is equal to 0. This is quadratic square. I can factor it plus a minus a minus equal to 0 and this is a plus 2 and a minus 1 is equal to 0 and here I have two values of a minus 2 and 1 okay now since we have assumed our solution y as e with parameter alpha a into x to the power alpha and since we have two values of a so we have two solutions we can call it y1 which is e with dog left function of parameter alpha and a which is 1 into x to the power alpha x to the power alpha and for the second solution I call it y2 with dog left function with parameter alpha and minus 2 x to the power Thus, the general solution is y can be written as c1 y1 plus c2 y2, where y1 and y2 are given in the form of Wittock number function. This is the solution of my fraction order differential equation. Okay. Now we can check this solution with classical differential equations, like if we take alpha is equal to 1, like we did in the last example. My differential equation becomes d2 alpha is now 2 dy by dx square plus d alpha since alpha is 1 so this is dy by dx minus 2y is equal to 0. I just replace alpha by 1. So this is a second order linear homogeneous differential equation. So it, the auxiliary equation in the form of differential equation have d square plus d minus 2 is equal to 0. Again, it is quadratic equation. Solving them, I will get d is equal to minus 2 and 1. These are two distinct real value of d. So, the solution can be written as y c1 e raised to power 
minus 2 x and c2 e raised to power x okay and for this and for alpha equal to 1 this solution will become y is equal to c1 y1 which is e alpha since alpha is 1 so it is e1 1 into x to the power 1 plus c2 e alpha is 1 and minus 2 x and we know that metal leffler function when parameter is 1 becomes just exponential function so it is c1 e raised to power x and c2 e raised to power minus 2 x and you can see that they have the same solution so solution does match with the classical differential equation by taking alpha is equal to 1 which means our this solution is perfect for the given fractional order differential equation so here you can see that with this new method with this assumption of the series in this form we can solve equations fractional equation of this type of course this, these are uh, both examples that i took are homogeneous without any conditions but we can take any initial conditions with them to get the value of constants and in special cases we can also solve non-homogeneous differential equation by special cases i mean whenever the gx a function which I, which can be written as an infinite series we can solve like if you have sine function or cosine function exponential function which have the valid infinite series so we can also solve that kind of fractional equation by using this method